Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss the cell membrane or the plasma membrane, the outer boundary of our cells. So let's get started. So you've probably heard that the cell membrane or the plasma membrane, the job is to control the passage of materials into and out of a cell. And that's, kind of where, that's what we're going to be discussing today. What is controlled and also what is the cell membrane itself made from? Well, at its most basic, the cell membrane is a double layer of what are called phospholipids. So here we have a zoomed in, a zoomed in image of a phospholipid. And we're going to dissect this and, and analyze a phospholipid in more detail. But notice how there's a, two rows of phospholipids. It almost looks like one is standing right side up and almost looks like one is standing upside down. Well, we'll explain why that is in a little bit. So an important feature of the plasma membrane is that it is semi-permeable or selectively permeable. And this means that only some materials may pass through the plasma membrane, not everything. Notice how the black circles are freely able to pass, but the larger orange hexagons are not. So molecules that are easily able to pass tend to be small molecules and they tend not to have a charge to them. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are two great examples of this. Molecules that are unable to pass or have difficulty passing tend to be large molecules or molecules that have a charge or ions. Ions are atoms that have a charge. You know, glucose is a large molecule unable to pass freely through the plasma membrane. Sodium and chlorine are ions, atoms with a, with a charge to them, and because of their charge, they're not able to freely pass through the phospholipid bilayer. Well, I actually want to look into a phospholipid in more detail. So here's our phospholipid from earlier. Notice how it has a lump of atoms at the top, a cluster of atoms. You know, we call this the head. And then dangling down, there appear to be two chains of, of atoms. And these are the tails. Now, when we look at the head of a phospholipid, it's actually, uh, chemically, it's polar. And I want you to know that it's made from two parts. There's the phosphate group. And notice how there's phosphorus at the bottom of, of, the, of that structural diagram there. And then the second part of the polar head is the glycerol part. And there's the glycerol part. Now, if you recall, polar molecules are molecules where an area is slightly positive and another area is slightly negative. Well, it turns out by the nitrogen, turns out this is where the the phosphate group tends to have a positive charge to it, and down by the oxygens tend to have a negative charge. So this is the reason why the head is polar. And as a result, the head is said to be hydrophilic. Now, when we break apart the word into prefix and suffix, you know, hydro implies water, and philic means loving. So the head is water loving. It will seek out water uh, and, and that's going to be important once we get into the, the cell membrane and all the other parts in a moment. And then there are the tails that we said earlier. So the tails tend to be two chains of fatty acids that have attached to the blue glycerol. And notice how one of the fatty acids has a kink in it. Well, that's because it's an unsaturated fatty acid. And the one that's perfectly straight is a saturated fatty acid. And so the, the two tails there are what are called hydrophobic. They don't have a charge. Hydro still implies water. Phobic implies that it's fearing. Now, it doesn't actually fear and run away from water. It's just not attracted to water. So when we look at uh, phospholipids in the cell membrane in a few moments, you're going to see how the hydrophilic head and the hydrophobic tails orient themselves. You know, for simplicity, you're often going to see phospholipids just drawn as a circle with two lines dangling down. And from, from now on, for the rest of this video, this is how I'm going to illustrate a phospholipid as well. So when we look at the arrangement, we mentioned earlier that the cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer. There are two layers of phospholipids that make up our cell membrane. And the heads, the polar heads, tend to be on the outside and the nonpolar tails tend to be sandwiched on the inside. Well, why is this? Well, this is because cells are surrounded by water on both sides. Outside the cell, the cells are in a watery solution. 
inside the cell, the cell contains cytoplasm, which is mostly made from water. So you know water is polar, and the heads of the phospholipids are polar, so they're attracted to one another. That's why the, the phospholipids orient themselves with the heads facing the watery environment. And so we have the hydrophilic heads on the outside and the hydrophobic tails on the inside because of their attraction to water. So now I'd like to discuss all the components of the plasma membrane, not just the phospholipid bilayer. The plasma membrane is also referred uh, is often referred to as a fluid mosaic model. Now when I hear the word mosaic, I tend to think of artwork. You know, various artworks are called mosaics because they're made from a, a wide variety of elements. You know, here we have two pieces of art made from tiles, different size, color, shapes, and they've been arranged to make these two beautiful pieces of art. And so the plasma membrane is very much a mosaic because it's made from a wide variety of, of components. And it's also called a fluid model, and I'll explain why that is in a little bit later. First of all, let's start looking at the components. The phospholipids we already mentioned with their hydrophilic heads and their hydrophobic tails will tend to allow small non-polar or non-charged molecules to pass. Carbon dioxide, oxygen are two gases that can freely pass through the phospholipid bilayer. We also see these yellow geometric shaped structures embedded within the tails of the phospholipids. These are cholesterol molecules. Now when we hear cholesterol, we tend to think of, you know, someone with too high of cholesterol and some negative health effects. But cholesterol plays a very important role. It helps to prevent the phospholipids from separating too far from one another. Therefore, it keeps the cell membrane compact and, um, and bound together and thus given the cell membrane its flexibility. So cholesterol plays a really important role in the overall health and function of the plasma membrane. In the green chain of circles, these are carbohydrates. Now sometimes these carbohydrates are attached to proteins and sometimes they're attached to lipids, but these carbohydrates are sticking out of the cell and they are used for identification or recognition purposes. This is one way our immune system knows to target foreign cells, but to ignore cells that belong to us. And for instance, our blood type is determined by the carbohydrates that are on our cells. Another part I want to mention is this blue channel in the middle, the protein channel. Now, like the name implies, it's made from protein, and it allows certain objects to pass, objects that can't just pass through the phospholipid bilayer like oxygen and like carbon dioxide, but larger molecules or even molecules that have a charge to them. Glucose is a great example. Glucose is unable to pass through the phospholipid bilayer, but cells need glucose. So glucose is actually taken in through these protein channels to the interior of the cell. Another part I want to mention is the cytoskeleton. Notice how there are these threads that crisscross and zigzag on the inside of the cell. Well, these are the protein threads that make up the cytoskeleton. Now, there's different kinds of protein threads. There are the microtubules and the microfilaments and the intermediate filaments. And the, the, the proteins of the cytoskeleton help to give internal support. You know, the analogy is like it's like the framing on a house. To help to support the house uh, so it doesn't topple over. But they also play another role. The cytoskeleton is also a pathway for molecules to transport and travel along. Here we see some molecules trans being transported uh, throughout the cell and even uh, some of the molecules uh, being exiting and, uh, and exiting from the cell. But you can see they are traveling along the protein threads of the cytoskeleton. So this is the reason why, again, the plasma membrane is called the fluid mosaic model. Well, mosaic because it's made from a variety of parts, but fluid because those parts can drift around and are in motion. The parts are not static. The phospholipids are able to drift left and right, the carbohydrates, the proteins, the cholesterol molecules. And so the fluidity 
can be affected by temperature and other environmental factors, but holding a lot of the phospholipids together, again, are those cholesterol molecules that are embedded within the tails of the phospholipids. So there you have it. There's our, um, our practice quiz here. If you're in my biology class, you know, pause the video, try to answer these questions on a separate sheet of paper, and I'd love to check your answers before school or after school one day. I'd also like to hear your comments in the box below. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.